Good morning and welcome to our morning musings. We begin a new week today, uh, continuing our reflections on the lessons that will be a part of uh, our worship next Sunday. And today we're going to take a look at uh, a royal psalm, and I'll talk more about that. But let's begin our time of reflection with Luther's morning prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected me through the night from all harm and danger. I ask that you would also protect me today from sin and all evil, so that my life and actions may please you. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all that is mine. Let your holy angel be with me, so that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Well, our psalm are some selected verses of Psalm 89. And Psalm 89 is what's known as a royal psalm. It's a psalm about the David and his lineage um, praising God for the blessings uh, of the king or asking God's protection of the king. And then today uh, we hear of David's praise of God, whose love is uh, forever steadfast. And so we're going to read the first four verses, then we're going to jump down to verse 15 to 18. These will be the psalms that we'll heard, we will hear uh, sung uh, in our churches this Sunday. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David, I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. They exult in your name all day long and extol your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor, our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King and our Holy One of Israel. There is the foundation. There is the rock upon which you and I stand every day. There's a saying, everything changes. And certainly over the last few months, it feels that way. How many changes have you and I made in the last few months with the rise of the COVID? How have our view of ourselves and what we can do and what we can't do about what it means to care for our neighbor? How have the last few months we changed our view of uh, what it means to have something simple like running out for a bite to eat? How have our views changed in the last few months about those who have suffered oppression of racism for generations and generations, and who now call that they be seen and heard, and that we honor them and what they have done to build uh, our nation and our lives. We have uh, seen in the last few months uh, changes, uh, radical changes in people's lives. Jobs have been lost or furloughed or People have had reduction in their income and have had to find some way to make this work. Uh, people's businesses uh, have uh, been pushed to the brink and some uh, may never be able to come back. So businesses that people have invested their lives in. We look at uh, the changes uh, in the last few months when I began these morning musings. Uh, we were enjoying cool mornings, but now the summer heat is here as uh, nature itself changes um, over and over. But one thing the psalmist says doesn't change is God's steadfast love for us. David, if he wrote this psalm, <clears throat> knows this from his own experience. Remember how David came to be the chosen one. The uh, judge, Samuel, is told by God to go to Bethlehem and find the house of Jesse to choose the next king uh, for his people of Israel. 
And so Samuel makes the trek with some trepidation. Uh, but when he gets there, Jesse begins to bring forward his sons. And there they are, uh, seven strapping sons, uh, strong and would be good, solid leaders uh, for the people of Israel. But everyone, God says, no, not this one. No, not this one. So finally, Samuel says to Jesse, do you have any other sons? And Sam, and Jesse says, well, there's the boy, uh, the little boy uh, who's out tending the sheep, one of the simplest tasks of the family. Um, so they bring David in uh, from the fields. And as soon as Samuel sees this young boy, this young shepherd, God says to Samuel, this is the one. I choose David. And I choose David not only for him to be the king of Israel, but for generations to generations. There are some who believe that this psalm was written after the line of David had disappeared. Remember later when the Babylonians come in and carry away the people into the Babylonian captivity, the lineage of David is lost. Uh, while the people are in Babylon, they don't have uh, anybody who's of the line of David. And when they come back, um, the king that they have is appointed uh, by whoever rules Israel at that time. There is no David lineage. So uh, where is this forever? Well, in the Gospels, great attention is played, especially in Matthew, of seeing that this Jesus is a son of David, an ancestor of David. God's steadfast love. Now, the world has gone through many changes and twists and turns. The God who promised David to be with him and with him for generations to come keeps his word, keeps his promise, and is steadfast. We're going through a lot of changes. And the ones I mentioned, but each of us could add to that, are personal changes, maybe changes in our health, maybe changes in our living arrangements, change. But you and I have a promise from God, too. It's a promise that came to us in the waters of our baptism. You are marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit forever. God's steadfast love has chosen you. Your name has been written in the book of life. You are God's child. And no changes in our world or in our life are ever going to change God's love for us. No, we in our brokenness and our sinfulness can walk away. But God is a patient father, is a loving God, waits. Waits ready to reestablish its presence in our lives with his forgiveness and his grace. God is as close to you as your next breath. God is always there. And Paul says in Romans, nothing's ever going to take you out of the hands of God in Jesus Christ. Everything changes. No, not everything. One thing remains the same. And that is God's love and grace for each of us. Today, as you live out today, whatever struggles you face, whatever changes you face, God is with you. God's grace is with you, and you are God's child. Know this, use this rock to build your home and your life. Use this rock to be your foundation. In our prayers for this morning, uh, we want to uh, pray uh, for um, Ray Crum, uh, who's recovering from eye surgery, Elaine Kaufman, uh, who's still uh, getting some physical rehab and growing stronger after her surgery. Paula Grebner, uh, her test uh, showed uh, some cancer present, and so she's gonna have some further surgery and treatment for that cancer. Mary Marcus is on some new medication for her eyes. We certainly pray that that works. Chris Hill uh, is also waiting for an arteriogram uh, that's going to tell them some more information about what they can do to help him with his eye problem as well. Jason Hallberg uh, is uh, recovering from gallbladder surgery this past week. Um, 
and Carter, uh, LeVon Hallberg's grandson. He's just five. He had a heart transplant last Monday. Uh, there's some infection uh, after the surgery, so we just pray uh, that the infection response to treatment and this little one uh, does better. Larry Johnson, um, I got to call Larry and, and catch up on him uh, and his uh, struggles as well. Uh, but uh, he is certainly in need of our prayers. Uh, Joan Moore, we've learned are in her last hours at hospice. Uh, and so God grant her peace uh, and a peaceful transition and comfort to those who grieve. And speaking of those who grieve, we pray for uh, Marlene Heisel. Uh, and others who grieve the death of Tyler. Would you pray with me? Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your steadfast love in our life. It is the one thing that does not change. It is the one thing that is always there for us. You accepted us and loved us in the waters of our baptism, and daily that water of our baptism renews our relationship with you, and gives us a foundation upon which we can enter into the challenges of this day. We are grateful, Heavenly Father, that that love is not based upon us and what we do and what we say, uh, because we know, Heavenly Father, how often we fail to live as your child. But that steadfast love is simply your heart. It is simply who you are. You showed that love to David and to his descendants, you show that love in his descendant, Jesus Christ, who died for each of us. Give us, Heavenly Father, strength for the day. Give us peace for the journey. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for those who have particular struggles in their life today. We pray for Ray and Elaine, for Paula and Mary, for Jason and Carter, for Larry, Chris, and Joan. We ask your comfort upon those who grieve the death of Tyler. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are battling the pandemic. Give strength to those who are on the front line of that battle and give uh, healing and treatment to those who suffer. We pray, Heavenly Father, for our nation. We have come to a point where we need to confess our past and how the divisions of our nation continue. Uh, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you bring us together as a nation beyond the sin of racism. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you help us address the issues of poverty, of unemployment and underemployment that have plagued generations. We pray, Heavenly Father, uh, for our creation, that we might renew it and by your grace restore it so that it becomes a blessing to all people. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we use the gifts you have given us to the betterment of others. Rather than investing in things that divide, let us invest in things that unite and bring us together. We pray all of this, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Stand firm in the firm love of God's grace today.